hand-drawn animation takes a lot of drawings. And if you're learning animation, chances are you'll be flipping through other people's work quite a bit. It's a challenge to reverse engineer animation though and figure out which drawings came first, or which poses or movements were most important in the process. In this lesson, I'll show you the drawings you need to get right first. I shot a quick reference of an action to animate. It's a full body reactionary gesture. It basically goes up and comes down. So right away, that up and that down pose, those are the keys or extremes of the action. You can think of your keys as the what. What is the action overall? And get that on screen using as few drawings as possible. So I'll start with a neutral pose here just for context. And here I'm getting right into that first key or extreme. This is that classic anticipation pose. Think of it like a spring compressing that will then release its energy going the opposite way. Opposite is the key word. Every part of this pose will be reversed in the next pose. So the head, which was tilted up, now comes down. The arms, which were recoiled, now get outstretched. The curvature of the spine has reversed from, let's say, convex to concave. And in fact, I'm going back to this key now to reinforce that spinal line of action change. And I really want to make the most of this change. So I'm redrawing his right arm here, kind of making the pose feel awkward, like you wouldn't want to hold this pose. This will make the animation feel like that anticipation needs to be released. So here's what I've got. Because this is animation, you really want to evaluate it in motion. So flip constantly. Obviously the action won't be smooth yet, but you should be able to feel whether or not it has the appropriate distribution of energy. All right, and this is where people make a mistake. And I will demonstrate that mistake here. What I'm doing is putting in an intermediary pose, something directly in between my two keys. I'm looking at my start pose and my end pose and finding the middle point. Now it may seem to make perfect sense to do that, logically. After all, when I flip through this, it is helping smooth out the action. The problem is, it's a very robotic transfer of energy. Everything is moving at the same relative pace from one pose to the next. And that's generally not how the human body works. So I stopped drawing to feel this action with my own body. And I naturally wanted to keep my arms recoiled longer only allowing them to release at the end of the action. This seemed to increase the energy of this gesture, and on an animation level, it provides a whole new layer to think about. There is a distinct new pose introduced, this pose here. Even though this pose occurs in between the two key poses, animators don't consider this an in-between. It's far more important than that. This pose is called a breakdown. If the keys are the what of the action, the breakdown is the how. You're solving a bit more of the body mechanics in the breakdown. You know, how exactly does one key pose travel into the next? Is one part of the body slower or faster in its movement? If so, where exactly is it on its journey to the next keyframe, in relation to the journey of another part? So here in this revised breakdown, I'm looking to pin the hands very close to where they were in the first keyframe, which means the elbows also have to stay close to the same spot. And what I'm really changing is the head's position and the line of action of the body. So we end up with this animation. Can you see the improved sense of snappiness in that arm gesture? I think it really helps the emphasis of the point this character is trying to make here. All right, great, let's try a different breakdown. I find that when you start to exaggerate something, you gain the artistic confidence to keep exploring. So I'm exaggerating this breakdown pose even more here. The hands, for example, are moving a little bit backwards instead of forwards. I want to see what effect that has on the springiness. And the head and body are moving a little bit further toward keyframe two than they were previously. Notice that I'm rarely looking at just one drawing for any extended amount of time. And this sounds obvious, but that's what your audience sees. The motion, not the individual drawings that make it. All right, we'll get to finishing this off right after I tell you about today's sponsor. This video is sponsored by Displate. Displate makes quality art prints on metal. Yep, that's metal. You can find Displates featuring your favorite games, movies, even browse artists' portfolios. To install a Displate, all you need is... I'm just kidding. You start with this cleaning wipe. Find a blank spot on the wall, wipe it down, stick this sticky thing on, stick the magnet onto that, and you're in business. It took me five minutes to mount three of these, and I've really filled out my workspace. Displate ships to 56 countries worldwide. Their packaging is super secure, with orders delivered in four to five days. 
Before accepting this sponsorship, I reached out to Displate and asked them if they support or encourage users who upload AI content. If their answer to that question was yes, my answer would be no. They told me though that they are looking for handcrafted art and are working on measures to avoid AI content from being uploaded. Now, as you can imagine, that's an ongoing process, but I do appreciate that efforts are being made. You can get one or two displays at 22% off or three or more displays at 33% off. Just use the code MARCO. Thank you, Displate, for sponsoring this video. Now back to the lesson. All right, I wanna try a couple more breakdown options before getting into in-betweens. In this breakdown, the head is actually further forward than it ultimately ends up. And of course, the body has to support the location of the head, which means I'm dragging the arms a bit with it, though I'm still keeping the recoil in the elbow. Other than that, it's the same process as before. So here's how that option looks. And on this last experiment, I'll try using two breakdown poses. The reason it's appropriate to use two here is that this first breakdown is pretty wild. Almost every part is on a different path. I mean, the head is twisted in a new way. Each arm and hand is different. So I think we'll need another breakdown to get to the final pose, which I'm starting right now. Like I did before, I'll overextend the head here and I'll still keep the recoil in the arms. I remember Glenn Keane describing this as not playing all your cards until you have to. In this case, I'm not going to release those arms until I absolutely have to, right at the end. You can build maximum tension and interest that way. And just a final tip that I learned from Aaron Blaze, try not to rely on the onion skin or light box feature. I do use it to start off a drawing, but I find the animation just looks more lively if you place your drawing by flipping instead. And here's where I ended up with this option. Okay, to finish this off, I'll place some in-betweens. And this is where you might wanna use a chart. Your two extremes or keyframes go at the top and bottom of the chart. In the middle is your breakdown. And where I have two breakdowns, I have to decide whether they're like this or like this. Then you further subdivide that with your in-betweens. And where you place them will dictate how quickly your animation gets in and out of a pose. So here's my first in-between, which goes between my first keyframe and the breakdown. My process doesn't change much. I start the drawing with the light box turned on, but soon I turn it off and just do a whole lot of flipping. It's not uncommon at all to flip the drawings two or three times before placing a single stroke. After all, your in-betweens do have to go in the middle of two drawings. So precision is kind of the name of the game here. And if you're working on rough animation like this, you don't necessarily have to finish each in-between drawing. I'll leave this in-between kind of half-drawn. It's more than enough to smooth out the motion. Now, I'm not going to show you every in-between. That would take way too long. And it's also not really the focus of this lesson. But here's just one more. In this one, I am finally playing those cards and moving the arms to their final position. First, I'm mapping out the arcs that the hands will follow. This is an animation principle you may have heard before. Organic things will move in arcs rather than a linear path. And I'm also tracking arcs elsewhere, like in the character's nose, for example. Anyway, I found this in between tougher to draw, so I'm using a lot more onion skin to do it. But still, whenever possible, I turn off the onion skin or light box and just do some old school flipping. I'm also introducing another animation principle called drag. See how the hands are breaking direction at the wrist? The principles of animation are pretty deep and could support many videos. If you want me to make more videos like this, let me know in the comments. So off screen, I added more in-betweens as well as a cushion at the end. And here's how this shot turned out. This is the one with two breakdowns. I think it's reading well. I really like that little head turn, almost like he's spring loading his arms and his head on the way down. I think it adds a lot of impact and payoff to the final pose. And here's the results of one of the earlier shots we did. This one's a little more straightforward, but I still think it's effective. It's not quite as amped up as the last one, but that could be exactly what you need, depending on what you're doing. Ultimately, which one you prefer is totally subjective, but hopefully this lesson drives home the hierarchy of importance of some of these drawings. I hope it helps guide you with process too. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.